From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech Podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. And by audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners can get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash Deemable, over 100,000 tri- titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And from all Florida insurance options, an authorized progressive agency helping people shop for insurance at 904 757 3288 or at their office in Highland Square on Dunn Avenue in North Jacksonville. Hey, got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1 888 972 9868 or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. That's right. So if you haven't noticed, I haven't. Uh, you haven't, no. <laughs> the podcast has been a little sporadic lately. Yeah. Um, and really, it's kind of been every other week. Yeah. More or less. So, you know, it's summer. We don't want to commit to anything, but mostly <laughs> every other week. <laughs> it, there's been a lot of reasons, but, uh, you know, it's, it's summer it's, vacation. It's summer vacation. So, That's right. uh, just to let you know, uh, from here on through probably September, maybe beginning of September, we're going to be doing it every other week. Uh, we might do more, uh, but don't be don't expect an episode every week don't get your uh, hopes up you might be surprised and pleasantly surprised if we come in and do one every week uh, but we're probably going to shoot for every other week so just yeah. so you're aware so you know uh, but we do have a couple we have some good reasons we're working on some stuff uh, personally i have a pile of products to review that i've been sitting in my house for about a month or two so my wife and the uh, PR people that sent me the products, they really want those articles done and that stuff out of my house. So uh, we got a cool one, uh, the Therapic, which is this uh, really interesting insect uh, therapy device, insect bite therapy device. Oh, uh, I thought that was going to be something for picking your nose. No, it, it looks like a phaser, like a Star Trek phaser. We're gonna shoot somebody. It just it's light. Uh, Anyways, you'll see it on Deemable.com soon when I write the review up. I uh, also got these new uh, Jabra Halo 2 Bluetooth headset that I got. Uh, and it's some other stuff that I'm going to be reviewing, too. So those are coming soon. That's uh, not affiliated with the game Halo 2. No, it has nothing to do with the game Halo 2. Okay. I hear was, Halo the 2 first one I was think. Halo, and this one is the Jabra Halo 2. Okay. So really cool. Uh, keep an eye out at Deemable.com or on Facebook and Twitter. We'll let you know when those reviews are out. Uh, so we'll be getting those out. Um, also, we're working on the app, which if you supported us in the Kickstarter campaign, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we will be getting you, if we haven't already got you your rewards, we're going to get those out to you very soon. Uh, and we're working on the app and getting that developed. And uh, we're working through some legal stuff about how we're going to get it out there too. So we're working on that. So that's coming out. Um, but even when we're doing this, uh, continue sending your questions. Yes. Uh, the more questions we have, the more likely it is we'll do an extra episode. So if you want to see go. more of us or hear more of us, spam send us, us more questions. questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, but today on the show, we have a special guest, uh, right. Ryan Thompson, the creator and president of GAM, which stands for Games, Arts, and Music. Thanks for being on the show, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate yes. it. Cool. But now we're going to make you sit there and be quiet. <laughs> no, it's good. I want to take it. We have a couple of questions from listeners that we wanted to get to first before we talk to you about GAM and what GAM does. Uh, let's see. We got one from Joel. That's right. You want to read that one? Yes, I will. All right. Joel writes, hey, Ray and Tom. You may remember me from such questions as, should I stick my finger in there? <laughs> and is this burning sensation normal? I do remember you from those. <laughs> Today, I'd like to know about the differences between some Apple products. I'm slowly, I'm slowly being turned to the gala side. That's an Apple joke. That's, what, that's what he wrote. <laughs> Switching to more and more Apple products. I would specifically like to know about the differences between two products, MacBook Pro versus MacBook Pro with Retina Display, okay. and AirPort versus AirPort Extreme. <laughs> Is that good? Extreme. 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 For the MacBook Pro, <laughs> it's important to note that I'm... I'm going to get my guitar. I still want to do your air guitar just now. Just get up on the table and do it. <laughs> it's going to take too long to get the app out. Never mind. Forget For it. the MacBook Pro, it's important to note that I am not a graphic designer slash artist. The extent of my photo editing okay. skills will be just basic touch-up of photos. I'm not looking hmm. for a gaming rig either, just something that's reliable, fast, and has a decent battery life. Okay. For the airport versus extreme, other than awesome flashbacks to the 90s, what makes the extreme so extreme? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, and you can chime in too if you have any, anything to add sure. to it. I don't know if 
Are, are you an Apple guy or uh, are pick you a Windows side. guy? Pick a side it doesn't guy. matter. It's not yeah. the man. It's not the machine. It's the man. All That's right, my cool. stance. What's on your it. daily driver though? What do you use? Um, I'm on Windows and Android. Okay. Like, day in, right. day out. But I was um, a designer. I I, my daily driver is a Chromebook, uh, but I definitely love Macs. Um, I used to be a Windows fanboy, but then they came out with 8. And if oh you've ever heard God. the show, I want to shoot myself Windows 8 makes face. me throw up. So that's terrible to say, but yeah, it's, it's legit. It makes me nauseous. So um, let me answer your first question, Joel. Um, here's the difference between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Pro with a Retina display, which for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call it the Retina display and the standard model. Um, obviously, the Retina display model has a Retina display. <laughs> yeah. So the difference is uh, 2080 or 2880 times 1800 pixels uh, across and down versus 1440 across and 900 up. That's for the 15 inch display. So you're talking almost double the the display. Yeah, dimensions. it's it's a lot more pixels, and that means you're going to get a brighter screen. It's going to be incredibly high detail. And also, if you were doing video or photo editing, you have a lot more room to work with. Because when you're going pixel for pixel, mm -hmm. you can put a whole HD display in like a third of the screen of a, a retina display. It's really amazing. Um, also, surprisingly, the retina display model is thinner. And it's about a pound lighter. Really? Yeah. It's surpri I was surprised when they came out with that. It's okay. actually thinner and lighter. Even though retina displays usually take are a little bit bigger and they take more battery. Yeah. But it, it worked out. Um, also, the other difference is the retina model comes with a standard 8 gigs of RAM. Whereas the standard for the MacBook Pro, the standard model is 4 gigs. Now, mm. you can get 8 gigs in the MacBook Pro, but you, know, you pay more for it. So but when you're looking at standards... It's, it's higher. Also, the standard model comes with either a 512 gigabyte uh, solid state drive or a one terabyte hard drive, whereas the Retina model comes with 768 gigs of flash storage. So hmm. the solid state's better than the hard drive. It's faster and, and runs better, but with the hard drive, you get more space. Um, Whereas the flash storage on the, the Retina model is way faster and, and better and a little bit more than the, well, 50% uh, mm -hmm. more than the 512 solid state. So that, you know, can, could influence your decision. Um, also, the Retina model does not have an optical drive. So you're not going to use DVDs or CDs unless you buy an external. So that gotcha. affects it too. So if it were you, which would you pull the trigger on? If I had the money... I would get the Retina display just yeah. because I want it. So pretty. It is so pretty. I mean, I look at those, I'm like, ah. But honestly, if you're not a graphic designer, you're not a video editor, I'd say stick with the the the, the standard model. Yeah. I mean, you're mm -hmm. not going to get much of a difference out of it. They say the battery life is the same. I haven't seen any reviews saying the otherwise, but in my 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 brain has a hard time believing that more light bulbs equals the same amount of battery life. Yeah, that doesn't sound it, logical. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, I got. It's hard for me to believe that. But you know, with the flash storage versus the hard drive, at least drive, yeah, you know too. you have yeah. no moving parts, so yeah. that can make a difference. Um, but otherwise, I'd say stick with the the standard model. That being said, and I'll get back to this, that m I might change that opinion come the next revision which I would expect is probably mm. going to be in the fall. And I'll come back to that why in just a second. Um, to go back to your other question, though, the airport versus airport extreme. 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 <laughs> um, there's actually three options. There's the airport express, there's the airport extreme, and the airport time capsule. Uh, now, for everybody else who doesn't know what these airports are, uh, it's Mac's or Apple's uh, routers that you connect to the internet through. You connect to your, uh, your cable or your DSL modem, and you either wirelessly or with a wire connect to your computer with. Um, the biggest difference between them is the price, the size, the actual physical size of them, how fast they are, the speed, and what they can do, the capability of the routers. Uh, the Airport Express is the cheapest one. That's $99, and it's also the smallest one. It's about the same size as an Apple TV. So if you're watching the video, it's about that big, or about four inch square, you know, with rounded corners because it's Apple, <laughs> <laughs> and it's got, and it's about an inch tall, roughly. Uh, so it literally looks just like an Apple TV, except it's white instead of black. Um, it's also the slowest of the three options. It only runs at 802.11n, which for most products, is the top of the line. Yeah. I mean, for, for most of them. But the other ones have a faster one, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the Airport Express only has one Ethernet port, 
and one USB port. So if you want to plug in more, you'd have to look at the other one. Um, you can plug a printer into it and share it on your network. Um, also, something cool about the Airport Express is you can use it for AirPlay. You can plug speakers into it and play stuff from your iOS cool. device or Android device <laughs> or your Mac uh, and Windows and, and um, even, I think, no, Chrome can't do it. Chrome, Chrome OS can't. But all the other operating systems can. And you can play them wirelessly. So, uh, th so that's cool. Now, the Airport Extreme, the Extreme Extreme. Model, extreme. It also is more extremely expensive. It's one ninety nine. <laughs> that is extreme. I'm it's extremely about, broke. Yeah, <laughs> it's another hundred bucks. Um, it's about the same size, but it's four times taller. So it's like if you took four of the Airport Expresses or four Apple TVs and stacked them on top of each other. The reason why is because the antenna is in there, and they put the antenna at the top. I don't know what else fills up that much space, but <laughs> that's kind of big for a router. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of big. Magic, it, but it runs eight hundred two. Well, yeah, it's the magic. It's the, <laughs> you, you got to put the magic somewhere. Exactly. Uh, and it runs 802.11 AC, which is the newest, the fastest Wi-Fi standard. Yeah. And it, it is faster. It runs at three times faster than 802.11N. So arguably, it's almost as fast as a wire connection or faster than some. Now, that's, so that's, that's very theoretical. Yeah. But what is. I am reading is that they have very good coverage. Like if you have yes. oh, that's nice. you know, dead spots in your home and you upgrade to AC, the 802.11 AC, that right. you're going to see a lot of that go away. Every exactly. time I hear you say that, I just want to make Save by the Bell jokes. Like, <laughs> this is the AC model? That's awesome. Does, that's he, play, awesome. does he wrestle? I don't know. <laughs> So, um, oh, also with the Airport Extreme, you can share a hard drive on your network. What? In addition to a printer. So you can do that. And it works with any operating system, Windows, Android, iOS. You can access that hard drive on your network. So that's kind of cool. Now, the Airport Time Capsule. This is yes. the top of the line model. Mm -hmm. This starts at $299 and goes up to $399. The difference is it's basically an Airport Extreme with a hard drive built in. Uh, that's, no, that's pretty much it. The two the two terabyte model runs for two ninety nine. The three terabyte model runs for three ninety nine. Why do they call it a time capsule? Well, there is a software package that comes with it called Time Capsule uh -huh. that actually backs up your Mac and uh, okay. saves it automatically for you. It nice. doesn't work with Windows or other operating system. It only works with Mac OS, um, but it's really fantastic. Everyone I've I've talked to that uses it says it's really mm -hmm. great. Hmm. Uh, you screw up, you you know have to go back it's really easy to roll back to a previous version mm -hmm. and you can roll back to previous versions of your documents too kind of nice. like we do in google drive yeah. that's awesome yeah <laughs> kind of like the feature we already have in what we're using for <laughs> so, free so basically if you have an n router and it's working fine for you probably you're okay but if you notice yeah. it's slow or spotty yeah you know maybe you look at then look at the extreme extreme um and also if you're wondering because i was neither the the macbook pro that we were talking about before, or the MacBook Pro with Retina display comes with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Oh, whoops. <laughs> they only have 802.11N. But and the, right now, the only Mac that sells with the 802.11 AC is the new MacBook Air that they just released or just announced at WWDC. The new MacBook, or the Mac Pro, mm -hmm. the desktop model, the one you called the uh, well-designed trash can. Yes. It looks like a trash can. <laughs> This is it, a very nice trash can. Though. It is. I mean, it I'm, is. I would put it at the top of the trash can list. Yeah, I, I think it was actually, it, it's a really interesting design because yeah. the central fan, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. That's cool. How big is um, that thing? It's like this big. It's okay. really small. It, oh, it's it's a pity bitty. Oh, it's wow. a very, it's a desktop trash can. I mean, it's a small no, that's one. That's not bad. I thought it was like a keg at first. I was like, holy crap. No, no. It, yeah, a lot of people yeah. were confused. I saw some pictures uh, from iMore because uh, they were at the event. And uh, it looked, I mean, like next to... Uh, Renee's hand, mm -hmm. it was like just barely bigger oh, than man, his hand. That's so it's it's about that big, roughly, like maybe six inches across the top and mm -hmm. about maybe a foot tall. Oh, wow. So it's going to sit on your desk nice. I mean, yeah. and it's pretty. But the idea is there's a central aluminum core oh, that's what and the yeah, fan blows through the middle of it and all of it is attached to that central core. So it pulls all the heat right out. Oh, sweet. So yeah, it's kind of it's a neat design, but yeah, it does look like a trash can. Um, that the Mac the reason we I brought it up is the Mac Pro will have 802.11c when it comes out in later this year. And if I had to guess, which I do cuz I don't know anybody at Apple who's going to tell me rumors, probably in the fall they'll release new models of the Retina display 
the Retina Display MacBook Pro, if I had to guess, I bet that they're going to drop the standard model mm -hmm. and the new model will have 802.11c. That's my prediction. AC. AC. Huh? AC. AC, yeah. There was an 802.11c, but it's right. really old, and if you have that, you should immediately upgrade. And there was an 802.11a That's true. before C, That's but true. the current one is AC. So um, my guess is, and you can write it down, we can come back to it later, is it they'll drop the N, it'll be 802.11c, AC, AC, dang it. There we go. <laughs> All right, cool. So if you have to get one right now, uh, I'd get the standard model. You know, it, it, they're both going to be supported about the same length of time. And unless you really need it, the retina display won't, won't change your life. But if you ever think about doing video or photo oh, and get the retina display, it's right. awesome. All right. We got another question. We oh, wait. It. First of all, I forget. What do they do if they have a question? Uh, can they send it to us by smoke signal? Yes. Telegram? Telegram. Yeah, we accept uh, telegrams. and uh, I don't think we do. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> what, what, how do they send us a question? Singing telegrams? No, no, no. Okay. How about they call 9047? No, that's no, no. Nope. They can. Uh, how, how about 1 888 or an email questions at deanbull.com? I love seeing if I can trip him up on that. <laughs> I thought uh, you were going to give out your personal number for a second. Yeah, I was, just, like, just uh, I was looking at the wrong up. thing. I started to give, give them uh, all four insurance Our old options. number, yeah. <laughs> they are oh. great if you have uh, insurance questions. Yeah, they would, they would help Absolutely you. Absolutely call them. Yeah, sure. If you have tech questions, call us. You were know, talking about telegraphs. Did you hear that India just shut down the last state-run uh, telegram service? The last state-run telegram. State-run, yeah. Right. A lot of news outlets reported it as the, the last telegram service, and a bunch of companies were like, no, we still do it. I had a run. My sister and I had a running joke. She lives in in Canada, and she sent me. I don't remember the exact word of this, but she sent me yeah. like a text that was like, "I am going to send you an email," and then the email was like, "I am going to send you an uh, instant message," and then the message was like, "I'm going to send you <laughs> something else," and it just like, and finally the last one was like, "I'm going to send." This is just to let you know I'm going to send you a letter, <laughs> <laughs> and then the letter was like. I, if you're getting this, it's just to make sure that you got the email, the text. <laughs> and so I was like, how can I escalate this? Can I send her a telegram? And so I, it can I, be done. I went mm -hmm. online and sure enough, you can still send a telegram or at least you could six months ago. Well, and it still goes on a legitimate, you know, yeah. Morse code they print telegram it out and system. Then oh, it's man, delivered yeah. by, by uh, mail at the end. But yeah. uh, so yeah. I sent her a telegram. I sent a midget singing telegram a few years back. Yeah. That was well worth the money. He was <laughs> in a Superman suit. It was definitely worth it. You'll have to tell I, us I more know. about that later. Yeah, that might be an off-the-air awesome. story. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got another question uh, from Katie. You want to read that or I want to read that? You want to read I that. I want to read that. Yeah. Hello, Tom and Ray. Hi, Katie. I like to follow a few blogs and would love to get updates when new posts are added. Can you recommend a blog reader app for my droid? Thanks, guys. P.S. We love your show. My twin babies, Christopher and Clara, like to listen to it with us every Thursday morning. They're going to be so smart. Awesome. Um, those poor kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw them uh, yesterday, actually. Yeah. They are very adorable. You've been going to our listeners' houses? Well, these listeners I've known for a few years. You've known <laughs> one of them longer. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, Katie. Uh, anyway, what you need is an RSS reader app, and we've talked on the show about RSS before. It's basically the way that blogs can publish their content to third-party apps. Um, almost every blog out there supports the ability to do this. They have something called a RSS feed, and they, they publish it out, and any kind of uh, device or software that's set up for it can, can read it. Yeah, practically all news sites do, and yeah. most blogs. I mean, it, it's kind of built into everything now. Right. Word, WordPress has it, Blogger has it, and everything, all the content management systems that most websites use have an RSS feed in it. Exactly. So with a good RSS reader app, you can get all your news and your favorite blogs all in one app. Um, and if you go to the Google Play Market, and because she says she had an Android, and search yeah. for RSS Reader, you'll see dozens of apps, and most of them are free. But but there's a word of caution: do not download the Google Reader app. Oh, um, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's the top listed one. It has five stars, and it's an awesome app. It the is. problem is that it is being shut down on July first, twenty thirteen, which, as of this recording, is eight days from now. Yep, I think so. Um, so if you download it now, so you only have a matter of days before it actually stops working. Yeah, and it's too bad because Google Reader was kind of the 900-pound gorilla it of the RSS Reader world. It yeah. was, it was, mm -hmm. and I'm, it was a huge Google Reader fan. I use it all the time, I and mean, we've talked about this before. I had thousands of sites that I followed 
Mm-hmm. You had you had more than I did. Mm-hmm. I was shocked when I saw yours. <laughs> and you could just keep track of every single website you wanted to follow. And it would mark off, you know, when you read the articles, mm-hmm. or you could, you could, you know, say you didn't want to read them anymore. You, you could mark them. You could read, you could oh, read yeah. on your computer, and then pick up your your mm-hmm. Droid or whatever, iPhone, your iPhone, and it would device. know I already read this. Yep. Um, and that that's true. And so the thing is, Google Reader, it was more than just an app. It was yeah. actually that that syncing thing. It was an entire backend database, and they made it available to other people yeah. who created RSS feed readers. Yep. Um, and what happened was, so a lot of the best RSS feed readers, even if they weren't made by Google, they actually really depended on it for their yep. back end. And so this is where you need to be careful when you're downloading these apps is because a lot of the apps were dependent on Google Reader. And when it goes down on July 1st, they're going to go down. Yeah. Um, a few examples that I noted in the Android store were the something called News Rob and Good mm. News. Um, those actually in the description tell you they're going to shut off with Google Reader on July 1st. And they so have no plans on they have no plan. switching. So okay. be sure to check that the app you download is migrating over. Okay, so those are the apps not to use for Android, but what are your suggestions for Android apps that Katie should use? Feedly. 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 Okay. So Feedly is kind of the heir apparent to Google Reader. If you were previously using Google Reader, Feedly is making it very easy to migrate to, to Feedly. <laughs> okay. Um, redundancy department or redundancy. <laughs> uh, like Google Reader, it allows you to synchronize across your devices um, and your desktop and your phone. It looks and feels really similar to Google Reader, but it's more customizable. So Feedly would be my number one and probably my number two suggestion for an RSS reader app for Android right now. Yeah, uh, Feedly is great. It, originally, it used to be just a plugin for Chrome and Firefox, mm-hmm. and that's why I never got into it because it, I it, I could use it on my iPhone, but I couldn't just use it on the web browser. Right. But now they have it built into the browser where you can just go to the site and read it too. Uh, so it is available for the iPhone and iPad, and you can do it on the web now too. Yep. So any other ones? Um, G Reader is another <laughs> app that's getting strong reviews, and it used to connect to Google Reader, but now, wait for it, it connects to Feedly. Okay, so again, why wouldn't people just use the Feedly app? Uh, it's possible people might... G Reader's been a lot, around a little while, so people might just like the feel of the interface and want to stick with that. Okay. But if you're just starting out like Katie is, um, I'd start with Feedly. And best of all, it doesn't cost a thing. It's free 99. Free 99? <laughs> I've never heard that. If you, you know free 99? I'm with that on a shirt. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's free, free 99. 99. It's free 99. It costs nothing. It's free T-shirts 99. T-shirts available at dingable.com. <laughs> Not yet, but we'll work on that. Yeah. Uh, now, personally, you know, after we talked about the news about Google Reader, I guess it was a month or so ago, I, you know, spent the requisite amount of time mourning my favorite news reader. But uh, after that, you know, I looked at I looked at Feedly and I looked at the other ones, and I just decided not to move on really? and find another <laughs> reader. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I've kind of just gone back to reading Google News for the for the big headlines, and uh, basically just checking the individual websites. Yeah. Um, now, I do use Flipboard a lot, which I you have Flipboard, Flipboard on Android, I do, right? I do. Um, Flipboard is really graphic. It's really graphical. It's really pretty. Um, uh, ironically, Flipboard also ties into Google Reader. Uh, so I had to move my individual feeds over. But uh, uh, so I, I really enjoyed using that for my, for my news reading. Uh, and you might enjoy that too, Katie. So check that yeah, out it's too. Very, it's very graphical. It all it's shows free. you a nice, pretty image of yeah. you know, whatever, and it'll rotate through them. And it's free. So, but if you're trying to digest a lot of news, uh, then, you know, Feedly is probably your best option. Mm -hmm. Um, But like I said, otherwise, you know, uh, I've actually reduced the amount of news reading I've done by about 90%. Um, So I'm not sure if I'll go back, but for now, I'm kind of satisfied with uh, Flipboard. But I'll probably check out Feedly, too. Cool. Well, that's all the questions we've got for now, but uh, from our listeners. Right. And if you do have a question, give us a call at 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. You can always hit us up on Facebook and Twitter, too. That's true. But we have some questions for you now. Hoi. Uh, as soon as I find them. Mr. That's Ryan fine. Thompson. Now, tell us about GAM. Are we saying yeah. it right? You are saying it perfect. Because I think we went through four different things before. <laughs> So Some, it's GAM. Correct. Somebody like, is it GOM? Is it GAM? Is, is it GAME? Game? <laughs> I don't know. That was like the first one. Why don't we just call yeah. it GAME? And I'm like, um... We'll come back to that later. We're, we are GAM. GAM. And it rhymes with DAM or SPAM. No, Ho- Hoover DAM. Hoover Hoover yeah, Hoover right. DAM. There you go. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Beavers. Beavers. So um, we, we said before uh, GAM stands for Games, Arts, and Music. Correct. So, so what is GAM? What do you guys do? So GAM, I, the 
shortest way to say it is that we're a video game culture company. Uh, oh, culture company. Yeah, that's kind of okay. like our way of getting around it and say we do a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. um, our primary thing is uh, we throw these events uh, primarily here in Jacksonville involving games, art, and music. Okay. Uh, trying to bring more of the gaming industry here to Jacksonville. What and, kind of uh, events? Uh, right now, I would say it's much more of a... Like an after party. Okay. Except our after party is the main party. Is the party. All right. Um, They used to have a lot of events like this uh, on the West Coast where the gaming industry is more prevalent. Mm -hmm. So like when you would go to E3, you'd go to these big parties afterwards where Mm -hmm. there's there's video games and there's music and there's drinking, dancing. It wasn't something where only gamers could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Tons of other people can enjoy it. So that's why we try to recreate that feeling so gamers and non-gamers can come to our events and get kind of immersed in the culture a little bit. Cool. So give us an example of a previous event that you guys have done. So last year we did an event where uh, we had a primary. It was just called the Gam Show. We had a Street Fighter art exhibit where a lot of local artists, uh, Edmund Dan's art, uh, Logan Zawaki, uh, Derek Novato, who draws like Rob Liefeld. That's our dig at him every time. Um, you know, and myself, you know, we put together all the Street Fighter art. We worked with uh, Storm Unity, so they actually created – these fighting game tournaments where there are tons of stations set up where oh, people can cool. play Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Marvel vs. Capcom, all these okay. games. And they had like retro gaming areas as well where people could play right. Mario and Tetris. We had like an arcade cabinet set up where people could sign it. DJ Ness was uh, playing video game remix music mixed with nice. like Top 40. Very cool. We had free beer from Intuition Ale Works. Wow. Ooh. And then uh, we actually, a bunch of us teamed Intuition's up. Intuition's a local brewery here oh, in Jacksonville. Oh, Intuition is awesome. They're, yeah, they're great. Them and Bold City yeah. and Ard, Ardwolf. They have my Pretty heart. Pretty awesome. They have my heart yeah. and my wallet. But um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> then we also, we create a, a Super Mario World exhibit. So we had all these like floating coins and blocks oh, nice. and like nice. photo booth areas. So it was like all this different stuff for different people to enjoy. It wasn't and like. You had some cosplay too. Oh, on. we had tons of cosplay. Uh, yeah. Candy Keen and Three Muses came correct and like helped us get yeah, an actual Very cool. cosplay contest. People came through with costumes. Cosplay, uh, if you're not familiar, is where folks dress up in costume based on the characters in video games and all, all, all kinds of other stuff. Comic sci-fi, books sci-fi, comic sci-fi. books. Costume, yeah. cosplay, costume play. Yeah. It's like costumes to the extreme. To the extreme. <laughs> extreme. <laughs> you commit to a character and you do a costume. Yeah. <laughs> That was an awesome. If, uh, if you've never that. seen cosplay, Google and be cautious. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not at work so much. Yeah, I mean, most yeah. of it's pretty safe. But yeah, some of it's un- <laughs> some of it's not safe for work. Um. Just don't Google. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm like, what can I tell them? Just make sure cost? you have your safety yeah, settings on, safety on Google on. Image. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, or some don't. People, some people go on. too far with it, or well, maybe not too far, depending on your. Uh, whatever you're into <laughs> anyways <laughs> yeah um but yeah so yeah. we had a lot of that again <laughs> a lot of costumes and cosplayers okay um but it was it was a fun event and we had a lot of support from the gaming industry like ea yeah. uh supported us valve uh actually sent us and you guys were talking about steam the other yeah. day yeah mm-hmm. they sent us one of their actual portal guns signed for everyone from oh actual, cool that's awesome. uh, i was like the hardest thing in the world to give away i was like i could just <laughs> keep this no one would know it's a random drawing uh, I know. oh look uh, <laughs> it's ryan dobson uh, that's what? What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think who else chipped in. Uh, Naughty Dog. Uh, people might know them from uh, Uncharted. They just released okay. a new game, uh, The Last of Us. Uh, 2K Games. Like it, We had a lot of gaming nice. companies actually support Jacksonville That's trying cool. to get this event down. And, and Jacksonville doesn't have much of a gaming community or, not, or game development No, not community. really. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we want to try to help fix. Like we have a small mobile development community, yes. a small uh, web development community. Mm-hmm. A lot of app well, development. Well, the web development's web large, community. but it's it's, for, yeah. we were discussing before we went on the show, it's for insurance. It's for yeah. uh, medical companies. You know, right. It's not mm-hmm. for entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Like we have mm-hmm. one of the, Jacksonville is one of the big Biggest IT communities or IT job, I guess. Markets, I think yeah. yeah, they were what, third or fifth the other day placed. Yeah. I think in all wow. the U.S. And so there's wow. tons of IT jobs, tons of guys who actually can do <clears throat> development and software programming. Yeah. But it's all in healthcare and insurance, and yeah. it's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff you dream about, like when you're government a kid. and fish <laughs> yeah. companies. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, <laughs> and nothing against that. Like yeah. they're, they're great jobs and they're great companies. Sure, absolutely. But I know when I was growing up, I wasn't like. I can't wait to work in health insurance. That's mm-hmm. going to be the best, you know. <laughs> yeah. Databases. Oh, man. Of course, if there are any health insurance companies that would like to sponsor GAM, my name is Ryan Thompson. No, okay. but uh, <laughs> I, know, I think my mic just went out. Can you hear me? <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. I just can't hear myself. But um, 
yeah, so there's all these talented people here in Jax, but there's this other industry. I, I when usually we have meetings, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will reminisce and like, oh, you know, Jacksonville used to be it was the first Hollywood, and mm -hmm. it could have been this and it could have been that. And I'm like, well, there's this other industry that, from a market standpoint, eclipses Hollywood. People talk about how much money the Avengers yeah. made or Batman. These were well, you know, uh, for mm -hmm. for Jacksonville folks, we hear that story all the time. But we we do have some folks from out out of the mm -hmm. state and country. It, it, it's true, Jacksonville before Hollywood became established. The movie companies went from New York to Jacksonville mm -hmm. in the summertime, and they were filming here. And there were some politics that happened, basically, and they a, f a few of them got run off, and they went out to California instead. And that actually ended up being yeah. what caused Hollywood. Like that's a little little known Jacksonville history. You're welcome, Hollywood. Yep. <laughs> Without we us, got you. you wouldn't exist. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Do but. we like insert Jaguars jokes now? <laughs> we, we know they're saying now. Yeah. Khan's got it on lockdown. I like yeah. that guy. Yep. But, so uh, yeah, so you're thinking the same kind of. We're in a very similar scenario. We mm -hmm. have an industry that, so Avengers and uh, Iron Man, Batman. Everyone talks about right. all those were big, big grocers. Mm -hmm. Not like gross, ew. gross in terms <laughs> of money. Gross money, right? But then you look at something like Call of Duty, and you look at Halo, and all of these entertainment products completely decimate the same revenue that's generated from sure. mm -hmm. Avengers and Batman. But we're not really embracing that. But we have an opportunity now. Mm -hmm. We're all. I mean. I'm sure you're familiar. You see kids and they go on Code Academy or YouTube. They can learn right. how to they can learn coding. They can learn Maya and do mm -hmm. 3D and design work. The gaming industry, there's a very low in contrast to the movie industry overhead or bar to start getting involved That's true. Right. and make your own games. I mean, Apple has a yeah. great platform, Android does with Google Play. Mm -hmm. There's PSN, which Sony is making huge strides in trying to help developers. Mm -hmm. um, Xbox Live. So we have an opportunity now where Jacksonville could step up. EA is only two hours away making Madden. There's wow. a, another smaller studio, uh, Trendy Entertainment in Gainesville. They do Dungeon Defenders. It was like <laughs> one of the top grossing iOS games last year. Okay. That's, that name rings a bell, but uh, I guess I don't have an iPhone, so I don't it's get to an, play uh, it. I think <laughs> it's on Android now as well. Oh, really? they're finally on, and they're getting on PSN yeah, now. I, I, okay. you, wait, you wait about two years, and you'll get those games on Android. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day it'll change. <laughs> we have most. Anyways. But... um. So there's all this opportunity, and like I even I used to teach uh, here in Jax, mm -hmm. and I was teaching web design development. Cool. And uh, we would have the kids, although it wasn't like officially sanctioned. I was like, guess what, y'all are making games today, and uh, nice. so they would make their own version of Angry Birds. It took like maybe five weeks. They got yeah. to mess around with like a, a build of it. One that's kid cool. made Angry Babies, and I'm like, Jason, you've got issues, but you're getting an A because that's awesome. And um, that's great. That is amazing. Yeah, I was like so impressed, and I was like, so do I need to call like child services? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Um, what were the babies being thrown at? Or maybe you shouldn't tell. I those. think. Oh god, we're, I think the babies were being thrown at other babies. <laughs> so I don't. There's babies all the way. I want a copy of this game. Uh, if it, I can find it, was it on uh, the web or was it? It was just privately in the class. I think okay. we, I probably would have got sued. This kid's got or something. potential. This kid has potential. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're good, you're man. You're probably good. violating going some. Yeah, um, um, and that's probably why Art Institute uh, no longer has me employed. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> me and Art Institute are cool. Uh, but yeah, we would make games like that, yeah. and the kids were all like, "Well, I want to do this. Yeah. How can I? How can I keep doing this?" Sure. And I worked with a publisher for a while in LA, and I was like, "Well." You have to move. You don't have yeah. the industry here to support that. So we kind of, fast forwarding later on, we decided, okay, well, let's try to do something to bring some of the industry here to Jacksonville. Hmm. Okay. We just said, oh, we'll just do like this tiny little art show for video games. And then it just kind of snowballed really quickly into, we always thought that, oh, it would be awesome if we can make this kind of event or party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never think that we actually could. Yeah. And then it just kind of happened all of a sudden. <laughs> so now... uh so now I'm broke. No, okay, but <laughs> but it's awesome because it is actually it feels like it's actually working. Like we're actually mm -hmm. working with two. Uh, and we met one of these guys at One Spark, uh, two local indie game studios. There's Floppy Entertainment. Okay, all right. They're releasing. They were at One Spark as well. Yeah, which we're yeah. Kind of jumping ahead said. of the script, but yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. I mean, <laughs> said, oh. we did not meet Floppy Entertainment <laughs> at One Spark. Uh, we can get back to that part, but we're starting yeah, to work yeah. with local indie game studios. We're bringing okay. in a lot of other people from outside of Jacksonville to start supporting Jacksonville and the Southeast in general. Cool. So, I mean, so far, games are pretty good. I don't know mm. if I answered your question, but yeah, I've talked a lot. Yeah, in depth, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, let me ask you, where did, I think you kind of already me, uh, answered this originally, but where did you get that idea from for, for, for GAM? So, 
I always wanted to work in games. Uh-huh. And uh, after years and years later on, I was um, I saw some opportunities in L.A. because all the opportunities were right. in L.A. and Austin. And uh, started working with a publisher, um, Ignition. We did a few games like King of Fighters 12. Okay. I'm sorry to everybody who bought King of Fighters 12. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Uh, Miramasa, Nostalgia, DS. So they did some really cool games. Yeah. But it was one of those things where if I was going to keep working in that industry, I would have to move to L.A. Mm-hmm. Right. And I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So I came back here to Jack's was teaching and i just i kept remembering and all my friends were always asking oh man what were those parties like over there what was <laughs> the industry like over there and yeah. i would i would have stories but no real proof mm-hmm. i was like here's a picture we were at a random warehouse and they just gave us <laughs> lots of free tacos and open liquor bar and they're like no oh, that never happened I'm like, it did. <laughs> so eventually um you know my brother wanted to work in games all these kids want to work in yeah, games yeah sure. i think every guy every male at some point goes through, i want to make video games when I grow yeah up. every girl goes through a photography phase yeah. every guy goes through <laughs> I, video game well, you know, you know really, i never did that i always wanted to test games i just wanted mm-hmm. to see how a lame gamer like me would deal with the game <laughs> that's that was what the job i wanted that you can get that dream <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that could happen. i can be the lame gamer <laughs> you know what's funny um there was a I, I, there was a girl I knew who was a game tester at uh, Rockstar Games. Excuse me, um, <laughs> and uh, she actually she was a tester, and now you can hear her doing like the voiceovers like in Grand Theft Auto. And nice. She's like, "Hello, Nico," and she's like, "Oh my god, oh, Tamara, that's you." But um, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so, go oh, ahead. Oh, you guys were were in One Spark. We kind of talked yes. just a second about that. What was your project in One Spark? Was it just Gam and, and yeah, launching that? We just um, try to showcase Gam and what we do. So we okay. just did like a small recreation of the the Mario World environment. Like okay. we, we rebuilt like the clouds and having the coin blocks and the power ups. We had booze hanging all over the place. Where were you guys in One Spark? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me say no, 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 uh, go ahead. Go if ahead. you haven't heard before, One Spark was a festival that happened here in Jacksonville back in April. Uh, for creators and, and and inventors and music, art, a bunch of different stuff. Um, and we were all part of it. Uh, Dean Tech was part of it, too. Uh, where were you guys at? We were uh, upstairs in the landing in the food court. Okay. Mm. Closest to the bathroom. So if you need to use the bathroom, <laughs> you can talk to Gam. <laughs> nice. So they had to go past you to get to the bathroom? Correct. We actually stopped people and made them pay a toll. It was very much like a... <laughs> I was that's like a they, troll. That's how bridge. you raised your phone. That works. Yeah. yeah. That's how we got votes. It's like, you want to use the bathroom? Vote for Gam. Vote for Gam. <laughs> nice, nice. How did you guys do? We did well. Uh, we placed second within the gaming um, category. Okay. So we did. Cool. I, I cool. considered it. One Spark was a success for us just in terms of getting to meet other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's You what did better than us. I was looking at the results. Uh, I'm like, hey, put a little bit, put a little bit okay. more than us. Uh, that's a good spot my there by the bathroom, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, come on. Who else? Well, we, we started feeding people bad food on purpose. So then it's like, we know you'll get to the bathroom at some point. Have some more yeah. tea. Uh, you know, Al, Al Letson, who's the host of uh, State of the Reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he um, did great. Yeah, he did, he did really great. But actually, he was just on... Uh, a, a hangout with the guys from One Spark, uh-huh. uh, talking about it, and that was the biggest thing. Like, they, it didn't bring in a lot of money. No, um, I think even they only brought creators. in like thirty five hundred. Yeah, and they apparently spent a lot of money. Yeah, uh, on the event. Very so. similar story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we were lucky. We didn't actually spend that much on it, and uh, yeah, we did we okay. Didn't, we didn't even try. It was but, a, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a great event. We just showed up. <laughs> okay. uh, so, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Redeemable tech. Yeah. Well, what? We hey, had a. You we were doing your Kickstarter at the time, weren't you? For we had just draft? ended our Kickstarter. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually had we kind of geeked it up and mm-hmm. had like uh, my buddy Kenny, who who was on the show one time. He um has all this insane amount of geek cred stuff, like Windows ninety five boxes and <laughs> zip drives, and we actually took a computer apart. Basically, he's put it all never back thrown together. anything away in his entire like. Yeah, so got to know. Yeah, he he's got stuff. I mean, he can if hook the you apocalypse up. happens. You know, oh crap, we need a transistor. Call Kenny. He's the guy to go. Mm-hmm. So we we took all that. We put it on a bookshelf and like laid it all out and just talked to people about deal. I wish I got the guy to see y'all's yeah. booth. Yeah. I know. I didn't even know you were in one spark. Yeah, I, I, felt, I, I felt bad. It's, oh. it's tough when you're in one spark because you it don't is. get to see everybody else who's in one you spark. Get tunnel vision yeah. just because you have to stay so focused. You just you just give the pitch. You I pitch, think next year pitch, it'll be pitch. so much. Like this year was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just an event of such a huge. Can't scale. wait to see where it goes from. Yeah, now. the potential yeah. is definitely there to keep doing awesomeness next year. And I, and I hope they change the the prize structure a bit so that we see more companies from outside yeah. of Jacks come to Jacks mm-hmm. and and uh, be a part of it. 
Um, so tell me about uh, about GAM. How do you guys? How do you fund it? How do you? How do you make money? I mean, are uh, you a profit or a my non-profit? paycheck funds it? For my, well, for my yeah. day job, really? No, um, yeah, seriously. For the most yeah. part, we've tried to. Actually, and this conversation comes up a lot of like, how uh, <laughs> would you guys want funding or investments? And yeah. it's one of those things where if it was the right fit, mm-hmm. right? Because it kind of sucks. You don't want to sell your soul out at the beginning. Like, sure. if it's someone that you know is going to keep to the same values, um, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so far, we're just kind of independently funded by us kind of like some of the team members um and we're uh, currently we're for profit we okay. do also have a gam charity mm-hmm. we haven't been using that it, that much yet um i think eventually once we get 501c3 it'll be a different story okay currently we just we work as gam and then we partner with other charities like we've been gotcha. working with child's play charity a lot so okay. like oh, cool. with our uh, child's play being the uh, penny arcade uh, yes started those started guys are them. awesome oh. yeah he knows what's up. What That's do they do? From the distance. Penny Arcade's a webcomic about nerds. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, right. Yes, I do know what you're talking about. Okay, cool. And they do what it all. child's play, though? So they this put... doll kills people. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I remember yeah. Chucky, yeah. <laughs> I still have yeah. nightmares. <laughs> no. I had a My Buddy doll. <laughs> they, uh, they, they get uh, Thanks. <laughs> gamers to donate uh, systems and game, game systems and games to hospitals for kids who are, you know, oh, having to stay in cool. a hospital. So yeah, so I'm excited about that. It's a really good cause. I learned mm-hmm. something tonight. Yeah, That's awesome. See? We it can to happen. Have... It yeah. can happen. Even Ray. <laughs> oh, shut it. I was so close to bringing drinks tonight for you guys. I'm oh. like, should I? Uh, next time. Yeah. But yeah, so right now we just work with charities. Like we would okay. love to work with like Wounded Warrior or something for mm-hmm. other shows. But um, for now, yeah, we're for profit and then we work with chari- charitable organizations. Okay. So like the charity art auction, 100% of that goes to charity. And normally uh, we'll have local artists, international art. We get a lot of artists from like China and London, Canada. Cool. A lot of the game companies, um, last time End Space, they actually helped mm-hmm. do uh, Call of Duty ports. They're the guys who do Skylanders. Mm-hmm. So for almost every parent that's broke, that's the company probably taking your money. Is <laughs> okay. <it>? No. <laughs> Please keep buying Skylanders. Um, but they contributed like a whole My ton of My daughter, every time we go to Target, she's like, I want to get those. You're about to get like so much poorer. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Disney is doing this insane thing. Oh, oh no, Disney. That's bad for you, Ray. Oh, yeah, it is bad. Disney Infinity. <laughs> is it is it going to be like Skylanders? Oh my god. So, we just <laughs> we went to E3 last week. I mean, it was 2 weeks ago. Uh-huh. And Disney has this huge area in there. And like they've got the the coach from Cinderella with like monster truck wheels on it. <laughs> they've got it's an awesome booth. <laughs> And they have all these like Disney Infinity things, and for, mm-hmm. and I didn't know this. Disney has this policy. Where, actually, never mind. I'm not going to talk about that part. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> Disney had an awesome booth, and they're talking about Disney Infinity. And what it is, you're playing games in this Disney universe where now all the Disney, not all, all the characters they've chosen, right, can mm-hmm. interact with each other. And that's Pixar, Correct. and even like Pirates of the Caribbean. Correct. Um, I, I, I've seen some stuff about it. It looks really amazing. It is. Awesome, and they're just never going to go broke because <laughs> now they've got the Skylanders deal where they're bringing in toys, the characters, from the characters oh. in the universe, and that's going to tie into the games. And like, as soon as we saw it, they were like, "Oh my god, the ne- they're going to do Marvel next with this. They're going to start oh, doing." Yeah. Ooh, will they tie in Marvel into Disney Infinity? I don't know if they'll or do you think it'll be different. I don't know if they'll do something, something separate or. I know with with Jack Sparrow in there, I figure it's like you just open it up. Yeah, Jack I Sparrow mean, versus Spider Man. Oh, oh, there you go. Uh, How's it gonna play out? Well, when I saw Jack Sparrow versus uh, what's his name, um, uh, Sully from Monsters Inc., I was like, yeah. what? But can they have Jack okay. Sparrow versus Tonto? Oh, and of course, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, see, and then they'll do it with Star Wars. So it's like Spider Man versus Darth all Vader. Your money going forever. <laughs> Just never again. Versus All right. Um, <laughs> I forgot what we were talking yeah, about. That was a tangent. Hey, it was an awesome uh, tangent, though. So speaking of E3, you guys were there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we attended. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where, um, you know, we're trying as hard as we can to bring the industry here into Jacksonville. So right. we went to E3. We met with a lot of companies. Um, and actually, some of it was very successful. And a lot of educational gaming companies want to try to work with us okay. in terms of, like, we work with... Um, educational technologies and they're opening a bunch of uh charter schools next year tech charter schools Hmm. so we're trying to help work gaming into the curriculum and more of the computer sciences uh that's that's like the number one way to like if you want to jump start an industry like get a school Mm -hmm. you know 
because then you graduate with people they want to stay where, near where they are and yeah. you know it's a good and that's actually what's happened in um orlando like full sail has a great relationship true, with true. ea and they kind of right. funnel we've talked to unf a little bit and hopefully that relationship will continue they've been really interested in trying to get more mm-hmm. gaming into their actual curriculum but yeah, um that'd be great for them too yeah that's my alma mater yeah, yeah, Ospreys. Go Sprays. Back in my day, it was Swoop. Swoop. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. It was Kaka back then. <laughs> we, we we tried several, like, uh, somebody had, like, Beacom. Oh. I always wanted to gun them like a fish, but some people felt that that was too violent. <laughs> Tangent violent flag fish. here. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, but so E3 was awesome. Um, God, just so many sick games, like yeah. Titanfall. I don't know if any of you guys follow gaming at all. Mm-hmm. A little bit, yeah. No, not th- no, I hadn't heard of that. Titanfall is amazing so the guys who did uh it's like a uh, mech warrior kind of thing it's like right? a mech warrior slash more it was the guys who first made modern warfare and then left and they made this awesome kind of mech fi- first person shooter thing where they had this 25 foot mech robot in the main hall where like <laughs> the heads moving around and, like little kids are screaming like oh i'm gonna die and you know then i started screaming i'm gonna die too and then people are like why are you screaming like that you're a grown man i'm like i don't <laughs> know and uh they had like a guy with a giant mohawk just saying respawn entertainment because that's the company that made it. <laughs> but there were so many demos going on for like PlayStation 4 and Xbox 360 that you could see if you had something even on a smaller scale, mm-hmm. um, like whether in Jacksonville, you can see just how many jobs it would create for the local community. Sure. So I guess yeah. we were at E3, I think a few years ago, this may be three or four years ago, they were demoing Spec Ops. And they walked us through this dark hallway, and you go through the door, and it, they open, switch on the lights after they sit us down. And we're in this giant circular room that's encased in glass. And within the glass, they've imported sand from Dubai. I'm sure it wasn't actually <laughs> d- imported, but. And so they had the sand, then they actually rebuilt the city of Dubai surrounding us. So, like, tons and tons of sand, a, a rebuilt city, all encased in glass. Oh and gosh. then they just had a few screens demoing the game. Yeah. So you think if you have something like that, just how many jobs were needed just to create that, whether it's mm-hmm. like shipping or glass blowing or actually creating the city. Sand cities. importation. Sand imp- I mean, that's a big market, sand importation. <laughs> We've got a beach. You know how much, what a gr- great rate we could have given them yeah, on sand? That's true. That's true. Yeah. But you see how much money goes into the productions of just these booths. Mm-hmm. And then you say, oh, well, if there's someone actually making a game, you don't just need game designers and developers. You need lawyers. You need accountants. You need true. IP guys. You need... God, you need human resource people. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what... Company. Yeah, you need tons of jobs. It's like, everybody gets a job. You could be Oprah. You get a job. You get a job. You get a job. <laughs> that's and really cool. It was... Uh, I would I would love to take as many people to E3 as possible. It is, You just get this huge creative burst. Mm. We went to the Nintendo booth, and they had like j- new versions of Mario Kart set up where you could like, sit in the, the fake cars and... They had the boats from <laughs> Zelda Wind Waker, and I was, like, saying, they're like, oh, look, I'm on the seas. And <laughs> it's heaven for gamers. It's heaven for gamers. Yeah. Hey, we're so, uh, burning some time, so let's do this. Let, let's jump to the uh, last question, and then we'll come back to this, because I, I want to pick your brain about um, some it. more E3 stuff. Sweet. But let's uh, ask the question, which is, when's the next game event? And oh, is it? yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, the next game event is Saturday, July 13th at the Museum and Gardens. Uh, off Art Museum and Beach Boulevard. Okay, cool. Um, a lot of people forget that there's a museum back there. It was the I old. Forget. I guess it, I guess it's museum dri- Art Museum Drive for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. You are on point, my friend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, we're doing the Legend of Gam show this time. Where uh, we're doing a featured exhibit on Zelda, where we're trying to create a multi-level Zelda art installation. Ooh, cool. Try okay. to have like the Lost Woods, a dungeon with a giant Ganon. Here was like one of the prototypes, actually. <laughs> this guy will be like nine, eight or nine feet tall in, wow, the, in his hey, dungeon. That's cool. Um, Pat, you know Patrick Duffy. Yes, uh, he's awesome. He's making these giant lit up triforces, <laughs> um, and we'll still have artwork f- featuring other games, like tons of companies and other artists, and sending stuff like Mass Effect, hmm. um, Tomb Raider, Super Mario Brothers, Mega Man artwork covering all those games. There'll be video game stations set up for people to play. Tons of music this time. DJ Ness will be spinning again. We're having Mazikus come in from South Florida. He's known for making a lot of video game uh, remix music. Okay. Uh, Willie, e- Willie Evans Jr., uh, he'll be performing. Team, 
They were at One Spark. On Guard, they were also at One Spark. Okay. So I'll be performing more free beer from Intuition Ale Works. Oh, nice. That's always... So um, that's always what I heard nice. is free beer. Yes. Oh, okay. I should probably say how much it costs, though. Oh. It is free with ticket. That's what uh, I should okay. probably cool. specify. Sorry. All right. Well, then, that yeah. that's, makes it less free. Just show but, uh, yeah. All you can beer? drink once you get the ticket. Man, <laughs> why is everyone just breaking down the museum? Ryan said free beer. <laughs> Let me clarify. All right. Uh, I'm buy a ticket. How much are tickets and where can you get them? Tickets yeah. are... Advanced tickets are thirty dollars per okay. ticket, or you can get two, I believe, for fifty. Okay. Okay. Let me check and make Not sure too, before I get sued. Yep. Two for shabby. fifty. <laughs> All right. Um, it's forty-five at the door. We really try to discourage at the door. Sure. Day of, you know, mm-hmm. we try to plan out and have food and beer for everybody. Yeah. Um, so advanced tickets help us plan that and keep the cost down. Gotcha. And you can get those tickets at gam dot eventbrite dot com, okay. or if you can go to facebook dot com slash I love gam and purchase tickets through us on Facebook. Oh, cool. Um, and there's tons of prizes. Uh, Sony's like giving us God knows how much God of War and Sony stuff. <laughs> um, NC Soft sent us like all this Guild Wars 2, some $200 collector's edition dragon thing that's scaring my Yorkies at home. <laughs> um, they even like sent us these art books. Some of these we're going to auction off. Oh, some nice. of these we'll just oh, give Guild away. Wars, nice. Love what's, Guild your, Wars. what's your Facebook page? Uh, uh, the, I love GAM. Facebook.com slash I love G-A-A-M. Sweet. And we try to keep it updated on a regular basis. Sorry, go ahead. I saw you about to say something. Oh, no. I wasn't. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> um, and so we're going to continue to update just like what new artwork is going to be at the show, mm-hmm. what more performances. Um, there's actually going to be an after party, which we haven't formally announced yet, that all attendees will get into for free. An after party for the after party. Yeah, sorry. It'll be the after wow. after party. After, I think that's after. what we're actually going to call it, the after after party. Uh, DJ Trevor Rockwell is supposed to come in from Atlanta. Like for that one, I just listened to Ness. Ness is like our music director. Ness is like, this guy's awesome. I'm like, all right, I trust you, Ness. That's cool. <laughs> cool. But then five dollar cover, unless you're a GAM attendee, then it's free. Okay. And it'll probably be more video game music, some hip hop, dance, all that kind of fun stuff. And the Legend of Game Show, it's July thirteenth at six p.m. Correct at the museum, which is at forty one sixty Boulevard Center Drive. Yes, uh, Jacksonville, Florida three two two zero seven. But you can find that information at gamesartandmusic.com correct or facebook.com slash I love gam that's two A's yes <laughs> cool and uh, one quick can I jump in and say something else real yeah. quick yeah go for it uh, we're actually going to I just want to make sure the info oh no your so info is knows. correct sir all right <laughs> um, you can also go to gamshow.com because that okay. URL is way easier that is than gamesartandmusic.com oh, okay. and uh, we're actually due to we'll the include people include all those in the show notes too. okay awesome so. see you, you guys are Super we'll try. Yeah. We'll try. We try. Um, we've had a lot of questions and, I guess, requests for this. So we're going to extend the hours and open up a little bit earlier. Okay. Cool. And we're going to open up at 5 instead and have a kind of family-friendly hours Oh. from 5 to 8. A lot of people said that they want to bring their kids. And honestly, uh, the event is fine for – it is an all-ages event. They said they did want to bring their kids. They did want to bring okay, their kids. I don't. Yeah. I, that's <laughs> – that's where I am, too. Fan. I'm like, I just want to go. I'm, our core thing was to have this be a nightlife type of event yeah. for and kind of keep in that vein of, you know what? I want to get away. I want to relive cool video games and culture and, you know, mm-hmm. have a good time. So with all that kind of drinking and some of the costumes and things like that, it's sure. it's, it's party time. I want to get down. So kind of have some family hour. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So then it kind of so bounces like, out. Because, like, my, my brother-in-law, uh, he's 16. I'm sure he would love to go to this. Yeah. And... and my mother-in-law would kill me if Probably. he was around at drinking. Yeah, so. yeah. A lot of times when, cool. when there's underage drinking, I <laughs> would go to jail. So I try not <laughs> to do that. <laughs> the, the the going to jail part would be bad. I would just build your street cred, man. You know, I don't get know. the word out of it. Ryan keeps it real, man. There's he so many. Real. And you want underage drinking? Go to game. Just kidding. Do no. not, please. There will be. <laughs> <laughs> that is not going not to happen. Not a true statement. Not sponsored no. by game. <laughs> um. But yeah, so five to eight family friendly hours. We had a few kids last time, and it was fine. But I f- we figured this way, there's more of a separation where the people who want to yeah, have like their deal, they can have it. People who want to have their cake, they can have theirs. That's very cool. So I that's like what that. we're doing. Okay, so Ryan, uh, let's jump back now yeah. to to the E3. You were at E3, and uh, I don't know how much you're aware of this. Yeah, E3 was kind of special because uh, this is the year uh, that. The new the Microsoft and Sony oh. are rolling out their their next generation console systems. Yes, so they started yes. you know letting the trickle of information out, and then at E three they both came out with their kind of like big shows, yeah. big announces. <laughs> 
And, um, man, Microsoft did not do so well versus Sony, did they? No, they should have just called it the Xbox 180, because that's <laughs> what they've done since then. Yeah, so they had they were doing this thing where they're going to, like, it's going to be all digital, no more game discs, or if you do get a game disc, you install it, and then you never use the game disc again, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can share it with your friends. Which I thought was a cool idea. Yeah, I like it's, that, because that's what I do on my it's Wii. It's a very cool idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not officially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... He yeah. has never torrented anything. But the process, no, no, no. I legitimately yeah. rip all my Wii games and put them on. Got to back them up. The hard drive. Um, yeah, you got to back them up. Yeah. Um, but th- but the problem was that they said two things. One is that they basically they had con- conf- confusing system because their games were going to be all digital. They had a confusing system for trade ins. Could you do trade ins? Could you not do trade ins? Yeah. The answer was sort of maybe in certain situations. And then they had the other thing, which I thought was a bigger problem, especially since the Xbox has historically been so popular with the military. Yeah. Which is that every 24 hours it needed to check in or it would shut down mm. even if you were playing Oof. single player games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they announced all this, and they announced cool games like Titanfall and stuff. People were like, okay, yeah. And then Sony uh, rolled out their PlayStation Four uh, keynote, and they were like, oh, by the way, how, this is this is how you share a game. You give it to your friend. <laughs> a baller <laughs> move. I was like, yeah. he just dropped then the mic. On, um, no check in, yeah. no DRM, and people just went crazy. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft started taking so much flack for that. Yeah, yeah and they pretty much did the same thing when they went on uh, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, and uh, once again, just rubbed it in Microsoft's face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so no, I mean, yeah. So, did you get <laughs> to see either of those uh, events, or or is that not for the? Uh, I didn't get to see it. Wait, I wait. showed up late for that, and then I had meetings. So I didn't get oh, to do okay. anything fun, but uh, <laughs> I did get to see. Were people talking about that? Oh at the my show? god! Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like all anybody talked about for like a week during mm-hmm. the show so like we got to actually demo like the ps4 which oh that controller feels so good really it's really. so nice um and we got to demo some of the xbox one games but people were just stuck on the policies right like it didn't like the games were awesome it was just people were totally bad pr for them it was horrible and it was one of those things where like what you're saying with the military 100 percent accurate because especially here in jacksonville we're oh, a big yeah. military town sure, yeah and you can't you can't get it. It's like, okay, well, if I get an Xbox One, I'm not going to be able to play because right. I can't ping or check in every 24 hours. Yeah. I just want to play my Probably games. Mm-hmm. In the Caribbean or the Mediterranean yeah. somewhere. It's like, yeah, it's not going to work. Or imagine like if you've, you know, one of your friends is, uh, he's in the military and he comes in and he wants to borrow your game. Mm-hmm. And now you're saying, well, I can't lend it to you because Xbox One does. Of, they've 180 since then and they've, you know, yeah. said we're going to They took it all it. back. They're basically yeah, like, they're taking it, it all back. back. Just and kidding. And it was in a way, and but please don't give me flack on this. They didn't completely yeah. go back because, especially with the the discs, if it's a disc based game, now you have to have the disc in the the tray. Well, yeah, that's the same so, situation as the PS4. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah it's, it, mm-hmm. So whereas they were trying to make it where you put the disc in, you're done, mm-hmm. and then you put it in once, right. it rips it to the hard drive, you're finished. They did lose like a cool feature, I think, in terms of. Since then, like you can't do the sharing of games anymore. In terms mm-hmm. of, if I had bought a game on Xbox One, I go to your house. Once mm-hmm. I log in, I can yeah, just you play can just log game. in and play right. from anywhere. But um, that was a kind of cool thing. There were some cool ideas. That. It's just oh, it felt yeah. like they wrapped it in this sort of all these policies that were going to be really bad for gamers. It was policies and mistakes that all these other industries have already dealt with like the music you know, industry yeah. is dealt with the, mm-hmm. the movie industry oh my god to this day if i have to do anything in ultraviolet or whatever <laughs> video download crap i'm just like just give me the stupid movie yeah. you know nobody nobody likes all of those restrictions mm-hmm. like it right. doesn't really help and I, and I know there's always a study saying this or that but to this day i've never known anyone but i'm so glad there was drm on this i want to keep <laughs> buying more of this product i love drm <laughs> yeah it's DRM's just, great no one but, says yeah. that. Said no one ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> Said a publisher somewhere. Yeah. Uh, DRM. Uh, we kind of have geeked out. So oh, let's uh, explain if you're still listening. <laughs> <laughs> DRM, Hi, digital rights management, it basically is what restricts you from doing what you want to with your media. Mm-hmm. That's the simplest way to put it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, originally, of course, famously, they had it on, uh, or they attempted to have it on music, and that didn't work out so well. Yeah. So now when you go, even if you go to iTunes and buy music there, it's it's all MP3s, and you can yeah. do whatever you want with it, play it on anything you want, share mm-hmm. it with your friends. Yeah. They don't want you to, but you can. Because the problem is, any th- when you create these policies to prevent piracy, that's fine, right? Mm-hmm. But they're almost always just so, you know, 
painful for yeah. the consumer. It's like, you know, check in every 24 hours or jump through these flaming hoops, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, I bought this legally. Why are you treating me like a criminal? That's what people don't right. like, yeah. you know? They feel like if they bought it legitimately that you should treat them well. And it's know? kind of like other debates. Uh, the criminals will work around those things. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you know what are you real? You're not really helping anything. No, so. it's just causing a bad experience with the product at that point. Yeah, exactly. Well, Ryan, you have uh, thanks. Thanks for sharing uh, with us, no, and you have no made worries. me super stoked about Gam. Uh, yeah, sweet. totally. You know, Ray and I are going to be there. So absolutely, come for that. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if for some reason you want to see us, come that's actually what we're going to post from yeah. now on. Is like yeah. Gam's going to have Ray Tom right. redeemable <laughs> tech, and they're going to be extreme, extreme. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool well that is all the time we have for now uh thanks again for coming yeah, on it's been a pleasure um and check out let's see what are those websites uh gamshow.com g-a-a-m show.com and would you rather them buy the tickets through facebook or through eventbrite or either it way you? as it long as you buy the place? tickets uh <laughs> so, so yeah Advanced tickets are the way to go. Okay. Please get advanced tickets. I don't want yep. to have to charge anyone more for the same thing. Yep. So go to facebook.com slash I love gam or go to gam.eventbrite.com. We'll have all those links in the show notes at dmobile.com. If you're checking this out on a podcast listener, just go to dmobile.com. If you're listening to us on YouTube, go to dmobile.com. <laughs> if you're on our website, you're already there so just click the link just <laughs> it's easy refresh a couple times so we'll <laughs> you can do it <laughs> you guys should subscribe to them if you're on youtube yes that's you right. should yeah we just started posting on youtube that's why there's a little video if you're on the website uh subscribe on youtube mm-hmm. um thanks for your questions and keep them coming right. uh, call us at our toll-free number it's 1-888-972-9868 or you can always send us an email at questions at com. also subscribe to the show either on youtube or or search for Demonable Tech on iTunes or point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. Our producer, Sean Birch, and Robert Snyder provided video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Demonable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Actually, have two great weeks. <laughs> <laughs>